Check out the gear. There's no blue box on here, so it's immediate when you flip the gear. And again, if you take a look at the trailing link on there, I love that. Nice aluminum struts, and the, the front nose veer is an Oleo, but it's trailing link as well. Pilots, welcome back to Motion RC. I'm James, and today we've got an unboxing and assembly. Um, and we're going to talk about the spec on the F5N Tiger II from Freewing. This model debuted back in 2014 um, and was always considered one of the fastest 80 millimeter jets for Freewing at that time and even at this time. But the beauty of this model in front of me, this is the new high performance version. So if you know, uh, if you've seen, we've come out with a new inrunner and I have one over here. Uh, two new inrunners actually, but this one is the 1857. Um, in runner motor and that is coming pre-installed in the high performance version of the F5N in front of me. You can still get it with the outrunner version rather than the in runner and uh, you have two schemes to choose in the outrunner version. The VFC 111 sundowner scheme as you see here the camo with the blue missiles and then it also has a Swiss scheme which I believe was going to be a show scheme uh, for the Tigers back in the day. Now this model in general the real F5 is has historical significance. I, I always look at this one as man if I was going to make a jet or draw one on a piece of paper if someone said draw a jet my outline would probably look like this i mean she just looks like a jet and uh obviously still in use today was used by many over 20 maybe 30 countries use the f5 and many iterations of the f5 being that this is the f5n so there was a b all the way down the line. But looking at it, um, for this video, obviously we're gonna do our unboxing and assembly. So we'll start showing you how it all comes out of the box. Because again, this is a classic model. So it's missing some of those newer features that you get with today's Freewing Jets, but still a very pretty simple build, just a little more tedious in spots because you have to do a little extra work. Um, as far as that goes, but we'll show you all the parts out of the box. We'll run through the spec, um, show you a little, talk a little bit more about what's inside, wingspan like that. Then we'll do a step-by-step -step assembly, and then we'll have it on the table at the end. I already have it plugged in, so I can just show you the landing gear, walk around. One thing I do love that I can show you now is check this out. Look at how she sits on the trailing link suspension. I love that. Not that she's gonna land heavy, but just in case you do come in hot, that's gonna help. So I say, let's stop talking. And now if you wanna jump to any portion of this uh, of the video, so the unboxing, the spec, the assembly, or the uh, conclusion and features, uh, the links are in the description. So I have timestamps in there. You can jump ahead if you're trying to build this right now. But I say that'll do it for us right here. Let's get started with the unboxing. So taking the F5N out of the box, guys, you're going to see it's packaged just as nicely, even though it's a more classic model, but just as nicely as any other free wing bird. Um, as you pull the parts out, you got your two wing sections. It is a two-piece fuselage, so you have the front portion and the back portion are going to be in there. You have your two horizontal stabilizers. Those are full flying stabs, which is nice. You got your vertical stabilizer as well. Your canopy comes out as a separate piece and then you have your your aim nine missiles uh, already painted in blue and one thing you're going to notice on all of this uh, what I love about the F5N being that it was developed uh, you know about six years ago now from when this vid video is going they have servo covers on everything they already installed the nylon hinges and the ball links are already pre-installed I'm not sure that's how it was when it initially came out but that's how you're gonna get it now regardless of the version that you buy keep in mind you get your main landing gears come out separate so you're gonna have to install your landing gear yourself because much like the AL 37 the landing gear has to be down before you insert the wings you're not gonna be able to have the gear retracted when you put the wings together so I guess this was just an easier way for them to box it up was by not having the uh, gear installed but again it's nothing hard to do just a little glue and a little time and you're gonna be good there you can see on the front fuselage the nose gear assemblies already installed too as you see me lift it up here it is spring loaded so that's another nice feature this is a very lightweight bird and now with this new in runner system it's going to probably be even faster than it already was or definitely more efficient but it's nice how they eliminate weight by not including extra servos for gear doors and such 
But there you have it guys, decals already implied on either scheme that you're gonna have and everything laid out on the table looks really, really nice. So I say let's quickly run over the spec. As for the specifications, the F5N is 33 and a quarter inches wide in wingspan, that's 845 millimeters. It is 51 and three quarter inches long from, uh, from nozzle to nose, and that's 1313 millimeters as well. Now inside, again, depending on the option, you'll either have a 3530-1750 kV brushless outrunner, or you're going to have the 3530-1857 kV brushless inrunner. With the inrunner version, you're going to have 100 amp ESC. You got 8-9 gram servos throughout. Recommended battery is anywhere from a 4 to 5,000 6S pack. It is a 12-bladed ducted fan, whether you have the outrunner or the inrunner option, so you're getting 12 blades on this bird. And that'll about do it for the spec, guys, so let's go through a step-by-step -step assembly. All right, guys, so step one in the assembly, we're gonna go differently than the book. I started with the wings, because I immediately saw that the landing gear wasn't installed. So as I told you originally, you're gonna have to have the gear dropped when you put the wings on to do the final assembly. So the first thing you wanna do is grab your main landing gears, get a servo tester and retract the gears um, or drop the gears, I should say. And uh, that's gonna make it easier to install and also it'll save you time later when you have to, uh, you're gonna have to do it anyway to get it assembled. So once you get that dropped, next step is gonna be taking the glue that is provided, the free wing glue, it's like a foam tack. It's going to work perfectly for this feature. And now you'll see that on the wings, there's a trough already there for you to run the wire from the servo, from the uh, landing gear lead uh, to meet up where the flap and the aileron leads are. So you just want to be cognizant of that as you're going to install it. Now the next step, grab a razor blade or something sharp. And I like to score the, the foam, especially all the parts that are going to meet the landing gear. So score that up, that just creates more surface area for the glue to adhere to. Then you're gonna start filling in with glue, get it all over the spots that you know it's gonna be. And then when you're done with that, just be cognizant of the direction of the landing gear. You wanna make sure the trailing link is going backwards. You, can, you could install this wrong and as you watch, I did install it wrong and had to change it up quick before the glue dried. Luckily I caught it, but I was installing it wrong as you see here in the video. I didn't get a chance to redo it, so I just, uh, switch it up there but once you have that done you do it for both sides and you'll see both gear is up and those wings are now done now the next step is going to be gluing together the two-part fuselage so you want to glue the front to the rear now the front fuselage will already have the two carbon spars uh, pre-installed and there's two leads coming out of that side one for the main nose gear and one for the nose steering servo so just make sure you tape those away or tuck them away when you do this so they don't get in the way and then again whenever you're meeting two pieces of foam score up both sides get the glue nice and liberally in on there and then press them together you want to pull them apart any pieces that you glue especially foam to foam pull them apart for about 60 to 90 seconds so you see the stringy that allows air into the mixture then meet the two halves again and I let gravity do the work for this so I just placed the, uh, the fuselage inside the box standing upright and just allowed that to dry for about 20 minutes to make sure that it's good and dry before I get started with the next step. All right, so the next step here is let's get working on the tail. So what I did next was I did the horizontal stabilizers and they're both full flying stabs and you're gonna have to grab your little O-ring and the little screw provided in the baggie. And you can see how easy this is, guys. You're just gonna slide the rod over the hole that's open on the horizontal stabilizer. I took the screw and I just threaded it first, just enough so that the screw isn't showing through the hole, uh, through the circle, but just enough so it's in there already. So all I had to do was slip it over the side and then tighten it down. And you wanna get it as flush as possible. There should be no play in your horizontal stabilizer when you're done with this and just do it for the other side and your horizontal stabilizers are done. All right, your next step is your vertical stabilizer and you'll see the lead is already there for you to attach to. So just unravel your uh, the servo lead, plug it in, and then just make sure you tuck it away as you're fitting on the vertical stabilizer. And then from here, you're just gonna use the four flush 
mount screws. So they give you 12 screws total for this, and there are four different types of screws. The only ones with the flush heads, the four that you see here, are the ones used for the vertical tail. So just drive in those screws, and now your entire tail section is already done. So next step, we want to install the main uh, wing sections, both main wings. And now again, one of the things that they this, this model doesn't have that newer free wing models have is a nice ribbon cable. So here you're just going to have to make all three connections, one for your gear, one for your flap, one for your aileron. Make all those connections, make sure the carbon spar goes through the fuselage, and then just fit it on nicely, and you're going to use the four larger screws to attach your main wings. So you can see those here. Those are the ones with the fattest head on them. They're going to be uh, the ones that attach, and it's two screws for each side. When you're installing your main wings, guys, just keep in mind that you see the trough. You have to bring all the wiring into the fuselage. But here's where you're going to want to use the Y leads that come with it. You're going to use two two split Ys for your ailerons and your flaps. So you want to make sure they're plugged in and then it makes it easier to do that here and drop it into the fuselage than it is later. Then also you're going to use the triple Y lead they give you and that's going to be plug for your main, for your landing gears because you're going to have to plug to the nose gear later. But for right now, plug into both your mains and then drop that through. And then when you're rigging up the other Y lead, you have an extra Y lead. That's going to be to uh, for your rudder and your nose steering servo because you want them linked together. And then you're going to plug in the landing gear servo, which uh, I told you about was in the front fuselage. You're going to plug that into the open uh, lead on the landing gear because you need all three of those gear to be, uh, you know, to be working together as well. And at this point, so now you can install your AIM-9 missiles, and you can see on the wingtips that there are two holes, so these are not the, old, the new MWS railing system that sort of slot on. If you're used to newer free wing models, these are driven by screws. So the last four screws you have left, um, which would have been in the same bag as the ones we use, the flush mount screws for the vertical stabilizer, you're going to use those four screws to drive in and attach the AIM-9 AIM missiles. Now as far as control rods guys, they only give you two and those are for the elevator servos. So you're just going to have to uh, attach the full flying stab uh, control rods and just keep in mind that in the book they do show you a section for this and shows you where your vertical stab your horizontal stabilizer should meet up and it's right at the top of the square where the servo is. They should be in line with that, that's the starting point. So just make sure you have it there after you uh, plug in, get your servo centered and such. Um, before you attach the control rods. And then as for peripherals, there's only two. One is the nose, the nose pitot tube in the very front. Be careful with that. That's the easiest thing that could break off. But that just goes on with a little bit of glue. Then underneath they do give you a hook and that is that just glues into actually the compartment that the motor hatch uh, where you could find your motor. So there's just some slots in there that glues on very easily and just looks nice and scale, but obviously it doesn't drop. And then you just have these three peripheral pieces. Two are going to be nice covers for your landing gears. They can be glued on whether your landing gears are up or down on each side. And then you have the cover that goes across the bottom of the fuselage to hide all the wiring that we had to do um, when we brought everything into the fuselage. So just make sure you uh, do that. So there you have it guys. That'll do it for the assembly. Now let's get on the table and just go through some of the features. All right, guys, so on the table, again, the Freewing F5N looks really awesome. I love a model that has camo with, like, the contrasting colors. So whether it's the L39 with the yellow tip tanks or the T33 now, the camo German with the orange or even the F5. Uh, I love it. And from what I've heard, from what everybody said, it is one of their favorite models for the owners who've had it. If you go back into our Hobby Squawk forums and see that it was fast for its time, and now with this higher performance motor inside, I'm excited. I don't know if it's going to give it more, any more speed than it already has, but it should make it more efficient. So you could get some more battery life out of it, but that's something I'm excited to test. I only wish I had the other one. So maybe I'll drop an older motor that it used to come with in here at some point, but I'm going to try to maiden this ASAP. Now, as far as CG goes, they are recommending 21.85 inches, the way this book measured it from the nozzle all the way in, but it comes out right to this point, right between these panel lines and the cover 
for your leads. So that's where you're gonna that's where you're gonna get your CG. But again, I think when these came out, I don't even know if the 5,000 was a was a thing yet. So it's probably because the book all says 4,000. But uh, I've been going through Hobby Squawk, and 5,000 seems to be okay. And I, <laughs> I'm betting with the system since it is light. I mean, if the T33 is flying on a 6,000, you definitely have the space to fit a 6,000 in there. That's what I do love about uh, the F5 is you do have a lot of battery space. So if I wanted to, I have the Admiral Gyro receiver right back here because I did this on a live video. I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the gyro for this. But I can move it even further back in there and really get the battery going going further back if I want to. So a lot of nice space for an older model um, is nice to see in there. And again check out the gear. There's no blue box on here so it's immediate when you flip the gear. And again if you take a look at the trailing link on there, I love that. Nice aluminum struts and the, the front nose veer is an oleo but it's trailing link as well the, the back ones are spring loaded trailing link which is nice and then uh let's see the flaps so right now i just set the flaps up by the book that's half that's full i don't slow them down or anything i want to see how it how it goes on its uh on its maiden so that's where i'll keep them and uh i think that'll about do it again looking beautiful on the table and i can't wait to see her in the air i think she's going to be an absolute bullet so hopefully i'll have that flight for you uh as soon as possible but i'm sure being that this model's been around guys just google free wing f5n and you're going to get a lot of great flights because you don't just have to watch from us there's plenty of pilots flying our stuff out there and we love all of them for posting their uh their maidens and their flights as well so that'll do it for us guys in the studio i hope you enjoyed this check out the links in the description you have a link for the high performance version the regular original pmp and the swiss version of the pmp as well which doesn't come with a high performance but um maybe it will in the future they just updated this now so that'll do it for us here thank you alex for filming thank you for watching like share and subscribe and we'll see you next time at motion rc